everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Coding for the AC. First of all, uh, welcome to all my new subscribers. I gained a lot of followers throughout the last week, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, probably a lot of you guys are coming over from the Balkan Architects channel, which is pretty cool. So I hope you will enjoy my videos and welcome. So today we're going to do something very exciting, which is we're going to write a, our first little plug-in for Revit. Um, a plug-in or add-in as you may call it, is a software extension for an existing software system, such as Revit in this case, that you can write to add some new functionality to the software. So of course, this doesn't work with any software. The software needs to have an API, which is an application programming interface. But what that essentially means is that the software system that you're using so Revit in this case has a docking point on which you can dock onto from outside and um, exchange data with the program. So in this case, you would have Revit's core, Revit system core, that, that's not accessible from the outside. But then on top of that, you have the API and then you have your program and the API makes it possible to exchange data between the um, your program and the, the software core so that the things that you come up with can be processed by the core and likewise. So this is how you can add new functionalities to Revit in this case. So same as last time, we're going to work in Visual Studio, so open that up. And we're going to follow along this My Basic Plugin um, tutorial from Autodesk themselves, uh, which you can open up in the first link in the description box. So open that link as well, because later on we're going to copy some code from there. Okay, but first we're going to start a new project with File, New, Project. And today we're going to need a class library. So like last time, you get click on C sharp and then here you have the class library.net framework is what we're going to need. And then you give it a name. So that doesn't really matter. I'm going to call it coding for AEC lesson two. Okay, so once that is launched, we're going to talk a bit more about those windows that we ignored last time. So uh, here's the editor. And then in this window that I just made bigger, um, this is the solution explorer. So essentially what that is, is, is similar to your um, file explorer on your computer. It is just a list of all the files that belong to this project. So we have one generic class file that is just empty. That looks kind of like the hello world file that we had in the beginning of the last lesson. And then here we have the references and the properties. So on the references, you have all these links to other resources and libraries, because as you can imagine, you don't need to write everything yourself. There's a lot of resources that you can make use of. And this is what you have linked here on the references. And because we want to get a link to the Revit API, we need to add this to our references. So we right click on references and then add references. And those are the two references that we're looking for, but uh, for you, this will be blank. So we go on to browse and then, so depending on where you install Revit, your file path might be different, but um, usually, if you didn't change anything, it should be here under C and then Program Files, Autodesk, Revit 2018 or Revit, Revit 2019 or 16 or whatever you're using. And then you scroll down. So there's a lot of stuff here. But you're going to look for Revit API UI and Revit API. So... Uh, there's this one, 
and then Revit API, control to select them both, add, okay. And I'll hit okay. And then we have those two references. And now uh, we need to, when you click on it here, down in the properties window, you need to set copy local to false. Um, just do that. <laughs> Okay, and now we're going to do something that is very common for programming, which is just copy and pasting. <laughs> so once you get into programming, you will actually find out that it is a lot about just Googling your problem and then find somebody else who had has had the same problem and found a solution for that. And in this case, we're going to copy it from the website that I told you about before, and it's under seven. And you just start from here using system down to this last bracket and then press copy. And then you're gonna going to delete all that and just paste it. So let's look a bit at the code that we just copied. Maybe let's make it a bit more easy to look at. Okay, so, so this in combination with this might look familiar to you because it is a function, which we talked about last time. So you already know that everything inside of those two brackets belongs to the function. Now, and a line like this, for example, might also look familiar to you because it, because here we define a variable. It has the same format like last time, type, name, and then a value. The only difference is that we have all these new types that we didn't talk about last time. And that is because they are not native to C sharp. They are actually types that are specific for Revit. So because we loaded those um, two references, we can now use new types that are just specific for Revit use cases. So this document type, for example, is a Revit document. So for example, a project or a family. And in this line, we declare that we call a document doc that is the active document that you have open in your Revit project. And you can see that it is native to the Revit context if you get your cursor on top of it. And then it says here, autodesk.revit.db document. So this tells you the origin of the type. So for example, if we now type in integer, like last time, it is going to say that it comes from system.int. So it comes from the origin system, which is just the native library from C sharp. So what you should take from this is through loading the Revit API and uh, the Revit API user interface reference, we now loaded some new types or actually their classes, but we'll, we'll get to that later into our Visual Studio project and also some new functions that are specific for or and also helpful for developing Revit plugins. And when we use the plugin, Revit will know how to interpret them. So that's very handy, I guess. Okay, but now let's see what this code does. So all of this you would need to include in any uh, Revit plugin. This just loads the libraries and everything you need. And it just sets up the project. And after this, you will start writing your code. And then these two lines, you need to connect the code to the project that you have open. Okay. And then in this next line, you're going to declare a reference called pick graph, which is for start, it's zero, it's null. 
because we you want the user to select something. So you declare it, but it is not linked to anything yet. Oh, and maybe I should tell you what this um, plugin is going to do. So what we want to do is we want the user to be able to pick a group, like a group of objects in Revit, and then copy it somewhere else. Okay? So, and this is what happens in the next line. You have a selection that is made by the user. And then, as I said before, the reference that we defined here is going to be set as the same thing as the selection. And then we're going to get this element that the user picked and set it as a group. And then the next line, we're going to ask the user to pick a new point to replace this group. And then this is what the computer will do. It's going to start a transaction and create a new instance of this group and perform the transaction. But you don't need to understand all of that or any of that because today is just about copy and pasting and seeing that it works and getting an idea of what you can do and how this whole API thing works. So don't worry, we get to the whole coding part later in the series. Today we're just going to copy and paste from the website and then take a look at the result. So just save it all and then there's one more thing that we need to do, which is right click here and then go to the properties and then you need to change it this year the target framework from uh, to 4.7 yes okay and then we build the project which is right click and then build so what this does is translate the the code that is now human readable into computer readable code, which is just ones and zeros. Okay, so do that. And if you did everything right, you should get this result one succeeded. Yay. Okay. So now one last step, which is we connected this our Visual Studio project to the Revit API, but now we also need to connect Revit to our project. And for this, we need a manifest. So just open up the notepad on your computer, or in my language, it's called editor, <laughs> which is not German, <laughs> but we like the English language. And then you can copy this um, manifest code, as it says here, into your notepad file. But there's one thing you need to change, which is this path here. Because here you need to insert the path where you actually saved your project, your Visual Studio project, okay? So for me, I saved it under uh, user, sources, repos, and then here it is, coding for the AAC. And then you click on this folder with the same name again, and then bin, debug, and then you want the link to this DLL file. So you can copy the path. And then you need to add the name of uh, your DLL file, yes. So make sure, uh, yes, two. So make sure that it is the same as the, what it says here, okay? And now we need to save this thing here somewhere hidden. So make sure to 
turn on the hidden elements, I guess it's called in English, in your file explorer. And then we go on to save. And again, this depends on where you saved your Revit pro uh, program folders when you installed Revit, but it should be, if you didn't change anything, on your C drive. And then here, now that you've turned on the hidden files, you see this program data. Or if you didn't turn it on, you can just type in program data into the bar here. And now you go to Autodesk and then Revit, add-ins, and then the version of Revit that you, you are going to use, which is in my case 2018. And now you change from uh, TXT to all formats, and then you give it a name, which would be in my case coding for AEC oops, lesson two and then dot add-in. So it's the same as probably some other add-ins that you have up here. Okay, and now save it, close this, and we're ready to launch Revit. Okay, now Revit 18. And when it opens, it will tell you that the publisher of this add-in could not be verified, but um, that is because you are the publisher and you are not a verified publisher. So <laughs> that doesn't matter. Uh, you just click on always load. And then I open up this project that I drew real quick. Uh, I'm going to include that in the download file on my Patreon as well. So you can download it there and use the same, or you can draw your own project or of course use it in your own project. And so this is a very basic building. And here we have this group of furniture and a door, and we want to use that in all of the rooms. So we can use our plugin to copy it there. So if you've done everything right, now under edits and external tools, here should be our plugin that we just wrote. Okay. So first you have to select a group and then put it somewhere new and it works. <laughs> so of course this is just very basic and you could do the same thing with, with just copying it, of course, but we're going to add more and more functions to that throughout this series. For example, to copy it to multiple rooms at a time. And then the groups are going to adjust to the size of the room and everything will be kept aligned so that the furniture that is against the wall will stay against the wall and all this sort of things. So that will be very helpful if you have rooms of different sizes that you don't need to always rearrange all the furniture to match the room size or to make uh, thousands of different groups for each different kind of room size. So you can look forward to that. But for today, you can just be proud about finishing your first ever plugin. <laughs> so that was it. I hope it gave you a bit more insight on the practical applications of programming and how it can be useful for you as an architect or as an engineer because in the end um even if our profession is not about software we are using a lot of software in our daily lives so that is one way of how to make that easier for you <laughs> as always you will find my project on my patreon account it is in a zip file so you need to unzip it before you can use it and then always click on the solution file to open the uh, Visual Studio project. Next time we're going to learn a bit more about functions and things like loops and if commands so that you will learn a bit more about because today we were copying the code so next time we'll learn a bit more about how to come up with your own solutions. So stay tuned for that and then see you next time.